And uh, for those of us who cannot be here today, a warm welcome afterwards. And to you, uh, good to see you. Uh, thank you for joining and hopefully learning some more about Creative Commons licenses. Um, before we start, um, just like uh, checking in, is, is everything okay? Do you have some questions regarding the course while you have uh, one of the course organizers? To your disposal feel free also to join uh, use the chat if you don't want to speak up otherwise take this with you if there's anything we can sort this out johanna had one uh, question i will get back to that in the end um yeah um so just to warm up and let to make sure that i'm putting this at the right level for all of you um how much do you know about Creative Commons licenses? In the chat or oral verbally, unmuting yourself in either way, not much. You know, have you heard about Creative Commons licenses before? Have... No, good. Then this session is uh, has its use, um, at least for... You've watched the video, okay. And was this new, and uh, the content of this? Um... Oh, that's Mar Hi, Maria. Good to see you. Um, yeah, no, so like, uh, okay, good. Um, then you might have some questions. I will go through it a little bit. Um, yeah, obviously it's much less condensed as in a six minute video and you have, um, we have chance to um, answer a lot of your questions. A lot about this is the basic principle going back to the real basics is like talking about topic one, online participation, the network possibilities of the internet. We can say the internet is enabling us to share uh, globally with everyone, anyone who has an internet connection, right? Um, and that's a huge enabler. The copyright law prevents us from sharing because it makes it very complicated, international copyright law. And there is no one international copyright law. Uh, each country has its own copyright laws. So this is um, the um, basic starting point. Um, in research, we are very much used to hand over our copyright to publishers, which make a lot of money um, on uh, those transferred copyrights, selling back access to universities and libraries, for instance. So I get a lot of invoices from publishers. Um, and, and this is what Creative Commons licenses um try to remediate, right? Um, making a rather easy framework in order for us to share legally. Um, so I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, but I show a few, um, um, <clears throat> I show a few web pages. Uh, and I make this, try to make this um, very hands-on also relating to your reflection spaces, uh, enabling you to legally and um, safely reuse and integrate some pictures in your reflection posts and show you a way how you can find a lot of pictures um, and to start with. But um, I wrote this in the post this uh, just an hour ago this week. I don't know if you're aware of is International Open Access Week. Um, open science, big topic, at least uh, in the European Union, but also globally. So, and they're also all open access articles built on the Creative Commons licenses. And you maybe if you've published open access, then you made a choice already between those, uh, some of those um, um, licenses. Uh, many of us without really knowing what we're choosing here. <laughs> And what this means. So hopefully in a good 40 minutes, this will be much, much clearer, hopefully. And if whenever you have a questions, do not hesitate to interrupt me. And also after this session, ask me about your questions. Um, your university library, I'm sure, 
has uh, is some some activities related to this open access week. Uh, have a look at your library. I'm sure they have something. It's in a global um, um, yeah call, and uh, this year uh, fits on last year's uh, um, topic. Community of commercialization fits well also in the own health context. All right, this just a slight slight uh, short intro. Uh, what we're talking about. I make this very much hands-on. And for those of you who only want to see, um, and I didn't frame it like this, but just like for the context and use case for you in order to find pictures for your slides, conference materials or um, learning materials for your students, um, I just show you a few resources where you can find uh, pictures which you're allowed to use okay um we start with unsplash have you heard about it yeah some of you i'll put the links into the chat also when if i where is my i need to find my uh here the chat now we so uh, Unsplash one page, um, you might also know Pic Pexels and um, Pixabay. I put those links into the chat as well. Here on these pages, you can find pictures where people who have the copyright uploaded pictures and said, okay, everyone can use them. You don't even need to um, give credit um to um to me as a copyright holder um more and more uh, started uh, or unsplash a couple of years ago they started with unsplash plus so they show you a few pictures where you need to upgrade but you still find hundred thousands of pictures or millions maybe even high quality pictures for different use contexts here if you want to uh, autumn picture here you can just download it um, and um, uh, if you download it here for free, you can, you, um, um, you just download it. Uh, sometimes you can choose different um, dimensions, how, how large the picture should be. You also get um, um, this little shout out here. You can easily copy it. And here's a page already. If you have a write a reflection post, for instance, and make it more visually attracting uh, uh, or for your learning management system and have a post, um, there you can go to these pages and find a lot of pictures, right? And you, it's, we, we're very much used to in the academic sphere to give credit to, um, to the original author. So we should do this here as well to give, uh, to say thanks and uh, acknowledge where we got this picture from. But the point is we're not legally obliged. This is just uh, a moral right thing to do on this page here because people who shared their pictures and uploaded their pictures here they agreed to the terms and conditions of um of um unsplash and there they say you you leave over to your copyright and you don't require uh, anything um, and that unsplash can share for free quick question yeah, oh, there's pix uh, videos also. Yeah, I'm sure. And there's probably also a lot of other picture uh, sites like this. So if you have some, share them in the chat or in the community space. Um, so here we don't have to worry much about um, um, about licenses or anything. We can just download it and reuse them, and we're legally allowed to do so. If you when you create something and mainly uh, privately because it can depend on in a work context do you know what it takes for you to get copyright of something of a text of a music piece or something you create do you know what you need to do in order to be the copyright holder Um, anyone or do you um, yeah that's what a lot of people think um, but in fact you don't need to do anything if you create something 
a PowerPoint presentation, a music piece, and there is like a, a, a work, you are already, if you take a picture with your mobile camera, you are the copyright holder of this uh, work. This is might be different in a work context, like uh, in Sweden, for instance, um, we we are the copyright holders at the universities, but in some institutions around the world, the or, uh, the university would be the copyright holder. And uh, but in Sweden, for instance, when you are a teacher or researcher, then you have the copyright on everything what you um, produce. So and you don't need to do anything in order to be the copyright holder. You don't need to register. It's advised uh, to register if you have a commercialization interest to do something and then you can register copyright, but uh, you don't have to have to do it. Usually, if you're not on a place uh, like um, Unsplash or Pixabay and you find something on the Internet and you want to make uh, want to reuse this picture, for instance, what do you need to do? We and and hands down, of course, uh, um, not many of us do this. But if you and you and I have done this also in the past, I'm not doing this anymore. But um, before I learned about Creative Commons licenses and all this, what do, what if we find a picture and put it in our PowerPoint presentation for our students and put it in the LMS uh, in the learning management system? What do we usually? What should we do and what do we do uh, commit if we if we don't? Cite the resource and ask if you can use it, actually. Exactly. You need to find the, the copyright album. owner and ask for permission to reuse it. Yeah, but like if you just copy and paste something in your own work and then even if you provide a link and uh, appropriate referencing, um, unless it's referencing in an academic article, if you take a picture and just put a link where you found it, you um, conduct copyright breach. You're breaking the law. Most likely. So, and, 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 and this is, of course, what I was in, um, in, in, in initially the internet allows us sharing digitally creating digital copies of something doesn't cost us anything it's so easy but copyright law prevents us from doing so because we we <laughs> um yeah they, we have copyright laws to um deal with and this is not my, i'm not going to go into details about copyright laws but do you know how long when you create something how long you have copyright uh, on something, on your work. Long life or it depends if you register something, then you choose if you are going to put it like for, I don't know, 20 years, 15 years. I think it's up of the content creator. It um, really depends on which country you're in. Oh. Uh, it can be, um, I think in most countries, it's actually 70 years. And 70 years after your death. So if you create something now, you have your copyright, your entire life, and 70 years after you pass. And so long, and, and this is mainly driven by Walt Disney, really. They had a lot of copyright, and it's all about commercial interest, really, uh, much of it. This is why the an initial topic of the open access week was um, community over commercialization. This is, there's a lot of commercial interest in this. Um, for instance, uh, Disney has a lot of copyright role and there was the original, the, you might have noticed this last year, I think it was when the original, um, the original um, um, Donald Duck drawings uh, when the copyright for these were uh, <laughs> seized. And do you know what happens then after the copyright, uh, after those 70 years? It's free to use. Yeah, exactly. It's in the, it's free to use. It's in the public domain. I don't know if you have ever heard this um, 
then it's free to use. It's a common good, right? 70 years after the passing of the copyright holder. So this hinders, of course, a lot of creative um, um, processes, reuse and building on each other's work, uh, for instance, in educational context, right? Because um, uh, unless you go to places f like Unsplash uh, and we agree um, or people share it um, in ways that others can reuse it, this is very limiting. And this is builds on copyright law right so this is can be quite tricky and the remediation for this is creative commons licenses and they can seem a little bit um, challenging but we go through these and here is another place whereas with the first three i showed you find millions of place uh, copies like 5.1 million says pixabay here free images but if you go to um, openverse.org, you find 800 mil million creative works. And I show you a little bit the practical differences now. And maybe you can use the same. Uh, and as this is a workshop, please uh, be my guest and open a browser and go test the following. Say you want to do a presentation about your hometown or your university, in this case, in my case, Karlstadt. On Unsplash, I find 20 pictures. You get a lot of um, advertisements as well. Um, but um, here's a nice picture of uh, the convention center. There's an, another a nice picture. So I find 20 uh, photos which I can use, uh, which have to, with Karlstadt to do. That's nice. Um, but this is very limiting. If I go, for instance, to open verse and let's see how many are they now um i'm shown uh, top 240 results but i know um uh, they are uh, usually much more and i don't know if they changed them um, there's many more at least and uh, 20 and they are all different of course um and here we know um, on Openverse, all the works here are either in the public domain or are licensed with a Creative Commons license. Okay, and then you can filter them. If you only want to have photographs, you filter this. Um, and you can filter here on the right-hand side, depending on your use context, um, different licenses. So in we use this in order to go through um, the cre Creative Commons licenses now and then explain them what is what. Unless you have a question already or a comment. So, so let's say I'm, I, uh, we start with the most open license, right? Um, the bottom line here is that people who publish something with a Creative Commons license, they want others to reuse their pictures. Otherwise, they would not put a Creative Commons license on it. So the idea here is that instead of turning around also the, the process of usually we said uh, very rightly so that if I want to reuse something, a picture from the internet, then I have to ask the copyright holder, right? And here, with the Creative Commons licenses, we turn this process around. If I upload, for instance, on YouTube or on Flickr or anywhere else where I technically can, upload a picture and uh, connect and tag it with a copyright license, and uh, with a Creative Commons license, then everyone who knows this, uh, those licenses, know exactly what they are allowed to do with them, right? So. We start with this here, uh, CC BY. You have seen uh, this icons maybe? Yeah. So um, let's choose one. All these pictures here now, and I can load some more. Um, there are CC BY license. This is the most open license um, you can use. Um, and we, if you click on a picture like this, you can click here and say, get this image. Then you get to the link where this picture was originally published, in this case, Flickr, right? 
Um, you also get like on Unsplash this little copy text here. You can just copy and paste it to your PowerPoint presentation or to your um, um, WordPress page uh, or post in different formats here. And here you have the link to the license, right? And let's see what it says. The, um, and now we are on the creativecommons.org page the organization who put this legal framework into place. And on this page, you uh, see what you are allowed to do with this under this license type. You are allowed to share it, copy, read, distribute in any medium or format. So you can print this out. You can send postcards with this picture. You can also adapt. You can remix, transform it build upon the material for any purpose, even commercially. So you can take this final picture here and sell postcards with it if you wanted to, because uh, follow your nose. The user who uploaded this picture gave us the permission to do so. OK. They said in advance, you're allowed to do this, exactly this, what the uh, what CC BY license says. And here under the following terms, attribution, you must give appropriate credit. See how I said in Unsplash context, you don't, uh, you're not legally bound to give credit, but under the CC licenses, you always have to give appropriate credit and link back to the original work and to the author and to the exact license type so that we end up with this uh, syntax here boomsterboard at ecalstad that's the name of the picture and here's the link to the picture by follow your nose this the um, copyright holder and author or user who uploaded this on Flickr is licensed under cc by the link to the license okay this is um, this is how you have to give a credit appropriate credit so and there are no additional restrictions as long as you do this you are on the safe side uh, um, you can do whatever basically and uh, with the picture sell it re transform it build upon it uh, again uh, whatever your creativity permits uh, and technically uh, competences so this you you can do whatever unless uh, so long you give credit to it. This is why it's called the most free license also. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, if we go back to the results, um, the, um, the lower we get here, the more restrictions are there. And I share with the, I start with the, I hop over this one. I go to the ND. Uh, it stands for non-derivative. We take a take, look at this picture, go to this picture. Here you see again how you give credit to it. Um, Michael Wiemann. Uh, and the license here is CC by ND no derivatives we'll take a look at what it says here the um, attribution you are free to share my copy um even commercially even this picture here casa Rotus, you can print sell postcards with it right but under the following terms as always you have to give attribution and then no derivatives um, if you remix, transform, or build upon the material, if you make changes to it, you cannot share it. So, um, so you can only share it, your work, if you not make changes to the picture. Here, you cannot uh, uh, crop the picture in half or take... You have to have the, the work. You can sh redistribute the work as it is right now without... You cannot color it and uh, you cannot write over a text. 
but you could use it in a PowerPoint presentation um, and have it as a, a beautiful picture next to your text, for instance, that you are, were, are allowed to do, if that makes sense. Okay. This is the ND, no derivatives. Uh, then the next one I would like to talk about is the NC, and that stands for non-commercial. And that is maybe making sense. I take this one. We take a look at the picture here. You say a day in Karlstadt by R. Kurell, licensed under CC by NC. And you can probably understand already you're allowed to do whatever. You have to give appropriate credit as always. But here, um, uh, Kurell said, I don't want you to use it in a commercial context. So all of us in Sweden, for instance, or in most places in, in Europe at universities, we can use this for our um, learning in our un, uh, teaching research material. But if you, in the Swedish context, for instance, if you would do a, a, um, um, executive education um, where you, people pay to get uh, take part of your courses or in your private companies, uh, if you have a consulting company, then you could not use this picture. Okay? But in... Um, taxpayer-provided um, non-commercial context like university education, we don't need to, we are not limited by the non-commercial um, license. Okay, so the the copyright holder told us when we're, what we're allowed to do under which conditions or terms, in this case, non-commercial, you may not use the material for commercial purposes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so then uh, going back to the, there's like the little bit, maybe more confusing, share alike. Not so difficult. Um, oh, I open this in a new tab. Uh, and this here, Karlstadt Flugplatz, the airport. Uh, whenever you come to Karlstadt by plane, um, you'll see this building. From this perspective, this is um, by EWR here, Karlstadt Flugplatz, under share um, alike. And here the deed is a uh, maybe <laughs> it's it's not it's it's tricky to explain. In practice, it's very easy, uh, really. So you can share, uh, adapt whatever you want to, even in a commercial, um, uh, even commercially. But um, if you remix, transform, or build upon the material, you must distribute your contributions under the same license by SA 3.0 as the original work. This and and remixing what is a remix and what is built upon material this is for me at least a little bit harder to explain if you just show the picture in a in a powerpoint presentation then you didn't remix or build upon the material but if you would take this picture and uh, where is it um if you would take this picture and maybe copy paste in a uh, an airport, an airplane, and you um, in it and make a smoothie of it, a remix, remixing it with other pictures. And then you want to publish this, your creation, your work. Then um, the creator of this, this picture, EWR, said, then you are uh, required to publish your work with this license here. Is this somewhat clear? <laughs> this is, he is, I find this difficult, but if you just use it as if we would use in a, in a homepage, uh, just putting this picture there, um, um, even if you trans like, uh, would, um, 
drop it or uh, as such not really making a remix you don't need to care about this you can just uh, use it and give credit to ewr with using this syntax and you're fine it's just when you make re make something new out of this really building on upon it if this makes any sense yes moving on and the remaining parts here there's two more there are combinations of the former ones so if we use start here with ncsa there's new no new um combinations of letters um gam lastenbrun a very beautiful um bridge in karlstadt here as you see um this is um by ulf bodin um with this license and here again um we have this link to the um Deed, you are free to share and adapt even, um, no, not commercially, and you have to share it alike if you make a remix of this, right? Cannot do it in a commercial per, uh, context, then you have to get back and ask um, the copyright holder if you're allowed to. Um, and if you remix it in some way, then you have to uh, publish your work in the same under the same license. And the other um, version here is NC and D, um, like this picture. I don't know what this Sula i Karlstadt. Yes, of course. Um, Sula is um, the sun in Karlstadt. It's not a sun. Um, it's, yeah, you have to Google it. Um, uh, there's a story on um, Wikipedia, I think. Um, I cannot go into the details, but uh, here is the NC and D, and this is self-explanatory. Now, if you follow me so far, this is you cannot use this picture in a non -com in a commercial context, and you cannot make changes to this picture. Okay. So, in practice, if you want to be on the safe side in education, then you could choose public domain, CC0, CC by, CC share like, non-commercial as well. And you have, um, you can be sure you can, in an in, in educational context, in your regular courses, you could use any of those pictures. Right? And also in research conferences, conference presentations. Um you are very sure um you can be very sure not to breach any copyright law as long as it you adhere to those deeds and give credit um here just another word about public domain we talked about it and cc0 this is often used by um this um um logo and those terms are often used by archives or libraries when they have old work and they want to make it explicit there's there no there is no copyright holder then they would publish this work for instance the national library of sweden of of uh, um great britain of england uh, they would um use the cc0 license for all the public works in the public domain to make it explicit that there no one has copyright to those pictures then they would uh, put a cc0 license to it and it's basically basically what has been used uh, is somewhat adaptation, but in same in principle, CC0 licenses here um, with the first three, Pexels, Pixabay, and Unsplash. The interesting, or what is, what is so uh, good about um, those Creative Commons licenses is that it's a legally binding framework it it's holds it holds in in cases and has been tested in uh, in court cases and you can like we uh, normal people so to speak we we usually stay stay to this pages here or to, um, the human readable pages also called if and we have some colleagues uh, among us in the course um, there's also a legal code right so if you want to go into the details for each license, there's uh, the legal explanation <laughs> of what this means. If you have nothing else to do and really would like to read the fine print, it's there. 
And the very nice thing is that it's machine readable as well. If you upload a picture, for instance, on Flickr or um, a video on Kaltura or different platforms where you can share work, you can simply, when you upload it, say this work is a Creative Commonsly licensed and you indicate which one and then your work gets a meta tag with this license and a link to the license, which is machine readable, so that we can do stuff like this here, filtering and searching by those licenses, if this makes sense. And and this is also, and I don't know if you've seen this, if you go to Google and the picture version search of Google, you can also have uh, filtering by Creative Commons licenses. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. Most of us didn't. Um, but here you can just search for is this Creative Commons licensed or not, not by not in fine filtered detail as you can on Openverse. All right. That was... That was what I had. Now I'm uh, curious if you, uh, how much sticked and if this was clear and how clear this was and what is unclear. No. Um, that's good, thank you, and this is why we do this. Um, again, this is a huge, I mean, this is a legally fri binding framework and it's huge, used for open access publications. It's used for open educational resources, right? If you, instead of, if you would write a textbook or a PowerPoint presentation and you want others to be able to build upon it, other teachers in your context, and make use of your work and let them reuse it and fine-tune it or translate it to their local language maybe, then uh, you could consider uh, publishing your material with a Creative Commons license. It's not difficult at all. You just have to, you just let people know in beforehand what they're allowed to do without asking you. And you are in the driving seat, you're not losing your copyright on your work. You're still the copyright owner. A lot of times uh, colleagues think that, oh, if we do this, then we lose our copyright. On the contrary, um, we keep our copyright, but we allow others to make use of and build upon our work. And it's the same licenses which is used in Wikipedia. When you contribute something to Wikipedia, you use... Um, uh, you you publish your amendments to a text with the Creative Commons licenses that's saying that others can build upon what you contribute. And that is the basic underlying legal framework which supports all this. Very useful, um, in particular when you want to use um, um, pictures but this is there's also music if you go back to open verse um or he's not yeah we can um hmm. we can say jazz and we're not looking at pictures but we're looking at audio if you um, want to make a course introduction video and you need some background music right uh, here you can find also music and there's a lot of different platforms where you where people share jingles and music creatively commons licensed and then we um, um, yeah in a completely different um, use case for instance in our context and and just a note and this is not part of creative commons and has nothing to do really with creative commons licenses but just if you as it's the hot topic of the last two years, if you use generative AI to produce pictures, uh, you are also sure that you're not breaching copyright in using those generative AI 
um, created pictures because no one has copyright on on these. Um, at least that's the latest um, court rulings. And by the way, disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not supposed to give legal advice. And this is no legal advice. Talk to a lawyer if you're unsure. Your university surely has lawyers. I know in Karlstadt University, we have several lawyers. Your library often has a copyright expert as well. If you have other questions regarding copyright, go to them. If you are unsure about Creative Commons licenses and how to reuse works of others and what you're allowed to do and not to do and how you can share openly, come to me or other librarians who are having an interest in this. There's uh, quite so many contributing. And Jörg, if you allow me like to say something. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank it, you. It depends on the platform because in my experience, I work a lot, for example, creating videos. Yeah. And YouTube, and YouTube for example, works a little bit different because all we think that it is completely open and you see like a tiny line about like the YouTube um, simple license that they have and how do you, you can restrict or not or or change a little bit uh, using the Creative Commons license. For example, in our case, in European projects, of course, that we need like to open uh, the content to be shared and maybe even reuse according with the with the project uh, established at the beginning. But uh, in my case, we we learned that in a bad way because we actually think that we restrict something using like the simple uh, YouTube license, for example, and we discovered that we need like to select a little bit more about the Creative Commons license, the type of, of use that we want. So uh, in my in my experience, I think that we actually need to see a little bit of, or to to investigate a little bit more according with the platform that we use or we upload our material. Of course, it depends if it is an image. Uh, or YouTube also, for example, have a specific audio library that is uh, free to use. Uh, so I think it's very interesting like to know to know a little bit of that and I want to share that with you because uh, at least here at the University of Cantabria it's very common that people ask like I want like to use this video or I want to upload my video in YouTube but I want to know which type of license I need like like to use because change a little bit so in yeah. my advice is like to to check according with the platform because yes. not all of them works in the similar way. Exactly. Uh, I just wanted to show you uh, f um, this is, yes, the different platforms and YouTube um, in particular is not so good um, uh, in specifying which Creative Commons license you are talking about. It's actually very, um, and, and I'm just looking for a video here. Um, is this possible to upload? Uh, no, it's an invalid file format. Let's just give me one second just to make this point. Um, video. Yeah, because they check, actually, they check, they when you upload something, they check, for example, the music, the copyright of the music that, exactly. that you have and that kind of things, yes. Exactly. Like uh, if you, YouTube makes a lot of checks if you use copyright material. Um, um, I'm just showing you for instance, well, how it look, can look like. I'm uploading here a video. This is the media platform, Cowplay, which we have in Castle University. There, you upload your file and you have your title and your description. Here in our platforms, we can, we can actually choose um, if you want to use a Creative Commons license and which one. And this is what I was mentioning earlier. Now you can um, see, okay, I want to share it CC BY then I use this one. Then my video would be tagged automatically with this license so that it's machine readable. Um, and you have those different licenses here as we went through um, CC BY and CSA, for instance, or if I want to restrict reuse very much, I would use um, non-commercial, no derivatives, then people can just yeah, copy and share my um, video, really. Um, but... Um, in 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 um, YouTube, it looks like this. Um, so more there, you actually can 
and there's a lot of things you can say, but here on the licenses, license types, you can either use the standard YouTube licenses or Creative Commons attribution. And yeah, and it's not really clear what is meant, but I think uh, what is actually meant is CC BY uh, here. But it's very, it's not very clear uh, if you compare it to this one. And this is really, um, if I understood you correctly, Priscilla, is like, yeah, this depends from platform to platform how well you can make this machine readable and accessible um, when you want to share your work as openly as possible. In EU, EU projects, you sometimes you almost have to say that it's uh, required to share your works as an open educational resource. Then... That means you need to share with some uh, CC BY license or which license which allows reuse at least. Thank you. Yeah, sir. or even in these platforms, we think that we can reuse because it's YouTube, it's open. We all imagine that ah, I can use that video and not all check like, oh, this have this is the specific license. Maybe I need like to check it before share it. In other, in other yes, ways. Yes, exactly. We, and I there, the, the, also, just this is uh, almost sidetracking, but like the thing is, um, w when you have an open blog, right, you can, um, and what we do um, in ONL, if you, if, if you, everything what is on YouTube accessible to the entire internet, you can embed on your open um, page, right? So if you don't change the audience, so to speak, um, th then you are safe also. So if you take something which is available publicly on the internet, you can make it embedded in your openly accessible web page as well. What you cannot do, and there might be from country to country uh, exemptions to this uh, under fair use or something, you, you cannot take something which is openly available and then put it in your learning management system because it's not publicly available. It's just available for those users who are logged in in that platform. So you're changing the audience, the public uh, for this resource and then you might be in trouble uh, if someone finds out. Yes, that's the, um, related to copyright and reusing and sharing. But for your blogs, um, hopefully, um, if you um, if you if you share a post, um, put up, uh, upload, download a picture from um, from Unsplash or from uh, Openverse and upload it as a featured image in your reflection posts, and then have this little um, uh, credit byline, um, and then you can make. Um, then your reflections can be visually even more appealing than just text. So then we can make more fancy looking stuff, but like uh, aesthetic qualities are important for us if um, if we are about to read or take in something. So um, yes, but that's uh, sidetracking maybe, and but relating it to your reflection post. One thing, um, now I'm almost forgot um, the question. M many of you have already started reflecting, creating your um, reflection space and connecting it to the ONL homepage. As I was sick now two weeks, I'm a little bit behind with stuff. And I'm sorry about this. We had some technical um uh, challenges we needed to change the plugin uh, which can read RSS feeds from other home pages. Um, so, uh, and um, in order, for instance, to sh uh, to show um, uh, no to show um, posts here under, under all in or oh, or oh, so I start again here under this page all individual reflection spaces. Uh, individual re reflections. We only show this those reflections from those of you who said they want to sh um, publish open, fully openly. This is unfortunately right now a very small subset of the participants in ONL two four two. 
I think there's five um, current f still active participants who set this at this moment. And only one has uh, published something so far, I think. So right now, right now, there is not much you can find unless people, some colleagues did this already in the community space, copy and paste their link uh, in the community space by hand. And that's, you're free to do, right? And where was this? Uh, now, of course, it's, you see why we want this to be categorized and filterable, right? <laughs> um, here, buddy. Is that no? Yes, you did this already, right? You shared your reflection here. If you go here, then uh, we come to your reflection. So thank you for doing this and for the initiative. There would be some um, or one reflection where you could um, comment on each other, and you could also ask in your PBL group, of course. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, uh, this will be up and running, and I'm up to speed that you will find some more. And we will ask the facilitators to remind you all that um, to connect your to start uh, creating your space, to connecting it, and to share openly. But again, this is up to you uh, which part. And I, my aim is to get the automatically the posts in here as well in the community space. Yes, buddy. Um, actually, yes, I shared my reflection and I used uh, for the cover photo, the photo that is taken by myself. Yeah. And I gave credit to myself. Yeah. So I don't have any. <laughs> Fantastic. Issue well done. Part with... Fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's oh, a long reflection space. And uh, you got a com comment already as well. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. That was nice. very good. <laughs> Prompt good. comment that made me so happy. <laughs> see, see, that's uh, good. Thank you for sharing this part because uh, I mentioned this in the last workshop, I think, on reflection spaces. If you read someone else's, don't just read it. If you took your time, write something that the other person knows someone read their stuff. So, um, yeah. All right. Rounding up. Is there... Yeah, yeah no problem. I already left probably already. Um. Anything else you are keen to know or um, anything else related uh, not to Creative Commons licenses, copyright, openly sharing, anything else? Hopefully you're just confused on a higher level now. 